I know you had a lovely break. Yeah, it was a good break. You're a little, you're a little croaky a little, this morning, like, my friend. I am a little croaky. Yeah, the last couple of weeks, um, going back to about January three or four, um, we tested positive. The whole family. Oh, um, so the whole family went down with COVID, and it was it was a bit awful to tell you the truth um, at times. But we're all clear now. We got through the whole thing. And um, look, it's um, they say it's mild, but it's it's pretty intense in parts. Um, yeah. So anyway, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But we're all we've had the rapid test. We're all clear, and yep. and thankfully for you, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> She's so happy. She's so happy, everyone. I mean, you might sound a bit weird, but you look amazing. Yeah, you look you, amazing. You. Um, and a very good morning, too, to Alex, who's at Melbourne Park for us this morning. G'day, morning, my friend. Morning, big fella. Hey, guys. <laughs> Great to see you after your 14 years holiday. Oh, yeah, Great yeah, to yeah. see you back. Yeah, I'm here in Melbourne, uh, Rod Laver Arena. <laughs> and great to see you and hear your well, Carlos. Mm. Very, very glad to hear that. But no, here we Hospitals are filling and frontline workers are being pushed to the edge. Dr Jeremy Wellwood from the Gold Coast University Hospital is in the thick of it and he joins us now. Doctor, good morning to you. Look, we know Queenslanders aren't used to the case numbers being this high. What's it like inside your hospital? Look, we really are riding that COVID wave up here. We like waves on the Gold Coast, but gee, this one is a lot steeper than we thought it was going to be. It's really busy. Uh, we got the bases covered. So when you say that it's steeper, that's In because... Terms of... Continue, sorry. Yeah, I mean, we uh, had not very much COVID uh, back late last year, but now we're literally getting thousands of cases every day here on the Gold Coast. We've got uh, seven COVID dedicated wards here, two pods in our ICU. I think Omicron's just a different beast, and I guess we've got to remember it only came into the country at the end of November, but it's just ever so infectious, and the volume the volume is really significant. It's, it's a hard one, too, because I, mean, I know inside our family, um, it, it, everyone got it and everyone responded and reacted differently to it I would imagine from a medical point of view and look some of us got really really sick mm. uh, and and some were, were, were just okay um, just had a, like a mild flu symptom but if you're being treated in hospital um, what are you seeing in there and, and and how many are going into ICU as a result of Omicron yeah well look we we People aren't coming here for bed and breakfast. They really are crook. Yeah. Um, they're, they're needing oxygen and medications. Look, the vast majority of people, as you said, will be at home and, and they'll be able to ride it out OK. But, but we've got around about 150, 160 people in hospital beds right here on the Gold Coast. Around about 10% of them uh, end up in ICU. And, and look, I mean, it's less severe than Delta, but gee, it can make people sick. Yeah. I mean, our staff are pulling together so well on this. And how are your staff doing? I imagine um, that there's been a few of them that have gone down with Omicron themselves. Yeah, well, look, here on in Gold Coast Health, I think we're about 2% of the population on the Gold Coast. So it stands to reason that we're going to have uh, mm. plenty of our staff infected, uh, plenty of our staff are close contacts. And, look, I think here it's just such a team effort. People are fronting up uh, to do shifts. Um, they're, they're doing extra work. They're, they're doing jobs that they wouldn't ordinarily do as well. I mean, we've got surgeons working uh, shifts in the emergency department. We've got kidney doctors working in the respiratory ward. Uh, essentially, everyone now is a COVID doctor or a COVID nurse or a, or a COVID administrative staff. Um, we've planned for this a long time and, and we, we're very proud of the way we're responding. Let me tell you one of the hardest things is, I mean, psychologically, uh, when you get this thing right, mm. um, because of, of the fear and, 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 and also the messaging around it um, in the lead up to um, COVID and the vaccination process and the encouragement for people to get um, the vaccination process, it's... It's, it's hard when you get it psychologically because you're thinking, when do I, uh, when do I call an ambulance? Where, do I need to go to hospital? What are, the, what are some of the indications around that for people who will be sitting at home, and there'll be thousands of them this morning, mm. when do I call an ambulance? When do I go to hospital uh, with this thing? Because you can feel awful. Absolutely. I mean, it's a, it's a viral illness and, and it's not nice. Um, look, most people will be OK. What we don't want uh, people doing is calling triple O or coming to the emergency department if they just have a mild viral illness. The sort of things we need to look out for are people with significant breathlessness. So they, they just can't get their sentences out because they're so breathless. Uh, or people with chest pain, uh, people that are dizzy or fainting, uh, severe vomiting or, or diarrhoea. These are the sort of flags that might make you think, gee, I wonder if I might get myself checked out. 
Um, and that's what the hospitals are there for. And, and look, we, we're, we're doing a, a good job. Around Australia, healthcare workers are doing an amazing job. But we need to be there for those that really need us. And there'll be people that are, that are potentially having those red flag symptoms, uh, those that are elderly, that have other illnesses. And certainly you're much more likely to need to come into hospital if you're unvaccinated. And certainly if you haven't had your booster, that seems to be a real factor Definitely. in needing to come into hospital. Mm. Definitely. Right. Doctor, thank you so much Thanks, for your Doctor. time this morning. I mean, how's it, when you're talking there about like breathlessness, did you mm. suffer all of yeah, that? Yeah, and, and look, it started out and it feels like, uh, you know, a bad cold, mm. you know, and, and it starts in the throat and then, and then it goes to the lungs. And, and look, I've tested, I'm clear now, but it's still mm. the residual um, effects of it are there. Uh, we were most worried about little Harper because, you know, she's like mm. 18 months old. Um, mm. And also my daughter Ava, um, they had it quite in, in a quite severe way initially, but then they got over it really quickly. Right. Um, and, and then Jazz and I both got it and, and I was much worse. Mm. She said, "Because I'm a man, um, yeah. which I which Your I vehemently denied. Is lower. <laughs> um, but I but I, I got all of the symptoms. Mm. So you know, you're just down for like three or four days, mm. and then it keeps on going on and on. So you kind of get." It's the dealing with it psychologically is the hardest I thing. I reckon. So, and had you had your booster? No, I was no. like three days away Wait from getting it, and then you know um, we went down with it. And we, you know, it was it was a good when everyone's sick in the house, as people will know out there. Mm. It's hard to look after everyone. Yeah. It's like a real process, and um, especially when you're an 18 month old who still yeah. needs to be entertained. Uh, yeah, or well, yeah. Right. I mean, I, don't, I didn't do much of that, <laughs> to be fair. There's I mean, a lot of the Wiggles. I, I just, I <laughs> Thank you, a Wiggles. Lot of Stan. Uh, um, but anyway, um, let us know yeah. how you're travelling with it all out there. It's, mm. it's not an easy process, uh, and we'd love to hear your thoughts. And it's good to hear that you're a bit better. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't sound better, but <laughs> no. um, it's, I def definitely feel better. Oh, yeah. That's good. Well, Thanks. Straight ahead. We are G'day, it's Ali. And Carl. Thanks for watching the Today YouTube channel. <laughs> Subscribe now for brand new videos every day and exclusive bonus clips. Ali, say please. Please? Why? Please? I don't know. <laughs>